Hello, and welcome to Studio 415. On today's show, you'll be introduced to a new principal. You'll hear about two NACS employees who are writing books. And you'll go to the links to see how girls golf team is doing. All of that and more coming up next. They're a very competitive team this year. We're ranked uh, seventh right now in the state. You like go up to random tables and say some nerdy joke. The part of the writing process I enjoy the most would have to be character development. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Layla Elliott. And I'm Amelia Herdman. During the summer of 2024, Carroll High School has had many staff changes, including new two assistant principals. Studio 415 reporter Eli Shipley met with one of two new faces introduced him to the school. Before he came to Carroll High School, assistant principal Brian Hill worked at Carroll Middle School as the assistant principal and athletic director for nine years. Before that, he worked for 16 years at a different high school. He taught U.S. history at different levels, as well as English for freshmen, juniors, and seniors, as well as dual credit English. I was always kind of a high school guy though. I taught 16 years at the high school and I really did like Carroll Middle and I miss it. It's weird. It's kind of weird. I feel out of place, but I also feel at home because I missed kind of high school curriculum in that age group. Even though Hill was at Carroll Middle last year, when he moved up to the high school, so did previous eighth graders that knew Hill. The new freshman recalled the fond memories of Hill during their time at the middle school. He, he's, he's a pretty chill guy. I mean, at lunch in middle school, he would he'd like go up to random tables and say some nerdy joke or say, I don't know, just something funny. Um, I remember he was very kind. He always had pictures of Abraham Lincoln in his room. <laughs> like a bunch of pictures of Abraham Lincoln. Every Friday, Hill wears a kilt to celebrate the end of the week. He wears them because he student-taught Indiana University back in 1996 through a program in IU and later became obsessed with the country of Ireland. He even jokes that he's Ireland's number one fanboy. The students say they really enjoy Hill's kilts. Dude, I think it's awesome. <laughs> I, I really liked it when it was at Carroll Middle School. It was, it was, it was a added personality to the school, honestly. It, it, was, it was fun. I don't, I've got five and they're all pretty cool different colors. I think I like the ones with green in them. I've got a red and green one and there's one that's kind of a purplish and green. It's pretty cool. So we'll say green. But Hill has more to him than just his guilts. One of the ways he shows his interests are through the figurines in his office. While Hill has many things for people to see in his office, the most prominent trinkets and figurines are from the popular movie series Star Wars. From the larger figurines, like Yoda and the Millennium Falcon, to the smaller ones on his desk or bookshelves around the room, Hill's room is lively with collectibles from the movies. His favorite being the fifth movie in the series, The Empire Strikes Back. You can find Mr. Hill at the student parking lot in the morning, in his office during the day, and in the CFC cafeteria during lunch periods. For Studio 415, I'm Eli Shipley. Everyone in Kill has to write an essay or short story at one point, but two Northwest Allen County School staff members writing full books outside of school. In my story, I spoke with two authors about the process of writing and publishing books on the side. English teacher Seth Kirton, who has been reading fiction and young adult books, has recently chosen to be on the flip side of literature. Not just by teaching English here at Carroll, but writing it. This book that has been in process of writing since 2017 is a mystery novel and coming-of-age story about a girl who goes missing. Kirton has had many inspirations in his life. He mentions working in a high school has helped his writing process. Kirton says his process has been filled with amazing and daunting parts. After I've given it to someone and they've read it, and they can have they have feedback for me. Like I've given it to friends, and you know we've gone out to dinner and talked about it, or we've hung out and talked about it, things like that. When they give me their honest feedback, good or bad. Kirton explains the frustrating part is always restarting drafts. Though Kirton's books have had more than six drafts, he has to edit all there is. There are hints, tape recordings, testimonies, and even characters have to sneak in places. Having said Kirton's book is turning to a passion project, another staff member has already published five books. 
Matt Beers is a bus driver for the Nag School District. He also trains new bus drivers. Beers has been riding for seven years. His latest release, Secretly Kings, is about a boy who killed his brother and is now learning to face the mess he left behind. He relates a significant amount to all of his characters. He pulls from his personal experiences to make the book more meaningful to him and his audience. I believe you have to put in personal stuff. If you don't put in anything personal, it doesn't have any gravity, it doesn't have any like truth to it, and it's not relatable, uh, and, it, and it just comes off as being very watered down and very thin. Beers is currently self-published as he feels doing it for others will take the fun out of his own enjoyment and would end up doing it for others rather than himself. Though there are some people who inspire him in his life, his mom is his biggest supporter owning all of his books. With his mom's support, he feels more inspired to keep pursuing his passion of writing. Beers has his own motto for future writers. Whatever it is that you want to do, start doing it. There will come a point in that process where you know this is it or this is not it. And you may find that this is not it, but somewhere along the way, you did find it. His newest unpublished book is about a boy being sent into the woods to become a man. If you'd like to stay updated on Beers writing, you can follow him at Matthew underscore Beers on Instagram. For Studio 415, I'm Leila Elliott. The Carroll Bills golf team has a current record of five wins and zero losses against their opponents. Studio 415 reporter Jonathan Miller takes us onto the golf course to get an inside look at the team and their success. The Carroll Girls Golf Team has been winning awards since 1979. Said awards throughout the years can be found in the trophy cases near the field house or the touchscreen in the hallway. In most recent years, the girls golf team has gone as far as getting recognition for their highly skilled players from the news media. Last year, the team finished regionals in second place with the 313 as the group total for 18 holes. Head coach Brian Collinger says that the girls have been very successful so far this year. They're a very competitive team this year. We're ranked uh, seventh right now in the state and uh, projected to uh, certainly have a great run at it at the, at the, uh, the end of the season. So sectionals is uh, already about four weeks away. And which is hard to believe that we're, we're that already that far into our season. The team usually starts practice towards the end of summer break. Despite the early start of the school year, the team has gotten in a lot of practice to prepare for sectionals. Practices go nearly every day per week with some spaced out breaks and consist of various exercises. That includes putting and chipping practice greens, the driving range, and occasional nine-hole matches against each other. While it is a team sport, each individual team member can focus on their own skills to better themselves, each fighting for the top five spots on the team. Second place member Gabby Frick says that practices go by pretty fast. It usually doesn't take up that much time. I mean, I usually am only here until 5.30, maybe 6 o'clock if I decide to stay a little bit late. Sometimes when there's matches, depending on who we play against, like if we play um, a little slower team, then it might take a little longer. Throughout everything, the team stays very supportive of each other. Congratulations and condolences are passed around at the end of practices and matches, and it can be said that the team is just one big friend group. Third place member Natalie Winter says the girls have a very close connection. Our team's like really close friends this year. A lot of us are like, we've golfed together since we were young, and we're all pretty tightly knit, and it's really nice having that bond. The girls' next match is here at Autumn Ridge at 4.30 on Thursday, September 5th. For Studio 415, I'm Jonathan Miller. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. If there's a story you would like for us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great week, Carol.